to another episode of George Sennett and his famous guests. One of our famous guests that we have today is Mr. Dave Tatro. Dave is here and is a wonderful musician. He's probably one of the first call trumpet guys in the, tr in the Detroit area. So we'd like to introduce Dave. Hi, Dave, and welcome to our show. Thank you so much, George. It's a pleasure being here. It's great to have you. And uh, we're going to talk today a little bit about your background. I know you've been playing music now for a number of years and uh, kind of like to talk a little bit about your, your background a little bit before we get into some of the new things that you're doing. Yeah, well, I uh, basically come from a musical family. And uh, my father and my two uncles and my grandfather all played banjo. Oh, right. And uh, my father was very talented, played plectrum banjo, played accordion, played violin. Matter of fact, when he was, I think, 12 years old, he was out playing square dances on violin. So, but he was all self-taught. <laughs> and uh, so he taught me, got me started on banjo when I was about seven years old. And uh, my mom played some piano. And uh, so it was, uh, I had the right kind of upbringing. You yeah, know? you sure did. I, wow. I, I would go to all my dad's jobs and jam sessions and everything else from the time I was just a baby. Bundled me up and, and uh, you know, we just go to house parties. and Get music in your blood, man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's great. But the trumpet, when did you start playing the trumpet? Were you in a, like a school band or anything like that? I, uh, yeah, I got, I took up trumpet in about the uh, fifth or sixth grade. But I really got interested uh, in uh, in the instrument. Uh, I think I was in about about the eighth grade, and uh, there was a group of high school kids come into our middle school, and they had a little little jazz Dixieland type band. Right. And there was an older he was well three years older than I. His name was Charlie Lewis that played trumpet. And he was my inspiration. When I heard him play, I said, man, I want to play, you know. And he eventually went into the Air Force when he, after he graduated. And, and I moved up and played a few jobs, you know, in his spot right. with the band. And, and uh, then I, um, in high school, I worked with a, a couple dance groups. And then I really got into uh, playing uh, wedding receptions and things like that. Back in the day, as you oh, all yeah. know, yeah. there was always some place that, that any musician could play, and, and, and no matter how good they were, you know, or <laughs> how bad they were, there was always there was always a venue, you know. Right. Well, we, you know, I, I did the wedding thing for a number of years. Yeah. And, you know, it was uh, it was great. I mean, we did like two to three jobs a week. Yep. And uh, we'd work on Friday night, Saturday night, and uh, Saturday afternoon. Yep. And do 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 weddings, and uh, we just uh, made a lot of money doing that well, back in the day. It was called it was called paying your dues. That was right. That's you, right. You, you played with some good musicians. You played with some bad ones, but a gig was a gig. Yeah. But anyway, that was back in uh, let's see, 19. I played my first job with my uncle Marston Tatro on New Year's Eve, 1966. Okay. I was I was 16 years old. It was a wonderful job. It was uh, Uncle Marston on banjo and uh, another guy on trumpet. His son was on drums. That was his first job as well. <laughs> it was my first job, and I was playing trumpet. And then we had this lady. Her name was Lucille. And uh, this was New Year's Eve now, and we were scheduled to play from, like, I don't know, 8.30 to 1.30, something like that. About 9.30, Lucille was passed out on the piano. She, you know, <laughs> she's gotten the sauce a little bit. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's back in the day. Yeah. And then, uh, then I got into uh, playing lounges. Like yeah. when I was 20, I started okay. playing lounges. Well, that was, well, the lounge experience was probably good for you. Well, yeah. You I, probably picked up some great musicians to play with at that point. Well, I was, I was working... Uh, with a nice little trio, and uh, we were doing all the hip stuff like Proud Mary and everything oh, else yeah. that you had to do when you were a lounge lizard. Yeah, know? absolutely. <laughs> were you? Was this in, in Michigan? Oh yeah, it was. Yeah, I was working. I had a great gig up in uh, Freeland, Michigan, up uh, by Saginaw, uh, for five years. Uh, wow. It was a place, a ski lodge and a steakhouse. It was called Bince's Apple Mountain. Okay. And uh, I was I played in the lounge there for for five years, and it was it was great. And then I left there and hit the lounges in Flint. And then 1979 got with a new Reformation band, and that's when 
things no, started opening up. No, the up. lounge the lounge groups you used uh, piano, bass, drums, and trumpet mostly. No, it basically organ trios. Oh, really? Yeah, B three organ. Oh, and, yeah. and uh, drums and myself, and then I picked up uh, in the uh, early seventies. Picked up vibraphones. I, I played vibes okay. as well. Cool. And um, so it went well with the with the group. So it's it's interesting that that you're talking about you know playing these kinds of gigs because I've d I've done that for years as well. But uh, the new Reformation band is your real start with with playing traditional jazz. Well, it was my my dad and my family played the old time uh, music, you know, right. five foot two and things like that. Right. And uh, when I got in the uh, New Reformation Band in uh, 1979, uh, they were playing r real traditional jazz. Right. A lot of stuff that I had never heard of before. But I picked up on it pretty good. And, uh, and that was the start. Uh, matter of fact, uh, when I got in in 1979, uh, Dave Opperman, leader of the band, was putting together a, a, an entirely new band. So I got in there with uh, five other guys, mm -hmm. and so we kind of started fresh and, uh, and bloomed after that. Yeah, that was a great band, from what I hear. It was it was a phenomenal. We had uh, we had three different versions while I was in the band. I was in the band from 1979 to 2000. Was, I okay. left in 2000. I had 21 years in that band, and. Uh, it was great. We did uh, uh, all the major jazz festivals uh, in the country, traditional jazz right, festivals. Right. You know, mostly on the West Coast, but throughout the, the entire country. And uh, we did uh, a ton of uh, jazz cruises. Yeah. And uh, all over the world. And um, a lot of symphony pops concerts. We really? got, We got into that too. Yeah. Our. Uh, Clarinet player Vince O'Keefe, he was a Ph.D. over at the University of Michigan in Flint, and he wrote out all the arrangements and everything else, and uh, we had some uh, we had some good things going on. We did, we used to do the uh, uh, Christmas program that was showed uh, locally on uh, uh, Flint and Bay City Saginaw right. stations. Uh, right. It was the Christmas program with the uh, Saginaw Symphony. It, oh, wow. was, it was the Christmas Pops, and we did that for several years. It was shown every, like, Sunday after Christmas, or, yeah, it was after Christmas, right. I guess. But your clarinet player did all the arrangements for he the did orchestra? All the, he did all the arrangements, you know. That's fantastic. Yeah, and he was the reed player in the band. Yeah. And we not only played the saxophone and, and the soprano and the clarinet, but he was the only guy who could read. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we called him that. Well, how about you? Can you you can read music some like Louis Armstrong probably. I can read music, <laughs> but not enough to hurt my playing. Yeah, well, right? But Louis could read. Louis <laughs> learned how to read, and uh, my reading level is very very low. Yeah. Very low. You know, about like my algebra. You know. But you probably know more tunes than any guy I know. I know a lot of songs. I know you I, do. And I know a lot of tunes in a lot of genres. You know, not just the uh, the uh, uh, great American song book, right, but from right. traditional jazz and Dixieland and, yeah, right. and everything else. Because you had to know all the tunes back in the day, as you exactly, well know. Exactly, right. When you're playing dance job, you had to know how to play a polka or Some a guy had to come up whatever. and say, oh, yeah, can you play this or can yeah. you play that, right? Yeah, yeah, you just had to do it. And I guess that's the thing that uh, that the upcoming musicians today will never have. You're they'll right. Ne they'll never have that you're experience right. of of having to go through the uh, all the hardships and playing with good musicians and bad musicians, mostly bad back yeah, in the day. Yeah. But you know, you, you always sought out better musicians to work with. Yeah. But um, Well, you blew me away the other day. We were up at um, Petoskey and some guy says, uh, I'd like to hear Miles Davis song. Remember that? <laughs> Yeah, and you all, and you came up with a Miles Davis song. Yeah, I all, can do one. All blues. Yeah, yeah all blues. Right. Yeah. Well, so. it, we we played it. I don't know how good we played it, but we played <laughs> it. But uh, yeah, that's yeah. Being able to to uh, to play just about what everybody wants to hear is a, is a real challenge. And like you say, today's musicians mostly read music and they 
they can, you know, see a set of chords on a sheet and blow, you know, through the chord changes. Right. But to me, it doesn't say anything. It's just playing scales and doing her doing her thing. You know? what, what I love to do more than anything, George, is is I love to be close to the audience. Yeah. Um, and I love to play entertainment, and I love not to have to pick out any songs. If if the audience would just send up requests, <laughs> that'd be great with me. Yeah, right. Because I like to play with guys that that can play the tunes as well. You know, right. I've been very fortunate to. Then if you got a vocalist, you got to play it in any key. Well, yeah. That's the other problem. Yeah, that is. It is. <laughs> but you know, you do what you got to do. But. Uh, Yep, you have to know a lot of tunes and a lot of different styles. Yeah. And uh, how long have you been playing the um, the venue up at uh, Petoskey at the uh, Terrace Inn? Oh, the, the spring the spring jazz weekend. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Kathy, my wife, and I were trying to figure that out. Um, we've been married thirty five years, and I was playing it. She thought prior to that, but then she came back and said, nah, uh, it looks like it was after we got married, so, because she was managing the band, she was managing the New Reformation okay. band. So it looks like about 34 years, okay. something like that, but it's been a great time, and it's a wonderful venue, and, and. Uh, I had a friend that lived in the area up there, and he kept talking about, you know, this jazz weekend, and I never hooked up with it until I got involved with the Jazz Society. Yeah, and uh, it's a great weekend. Well, I love it, you know, because again, I mean, it's it's very intimate, and and we've got maybe a hundred people there that are listening, or there to listen, you know, right. and enjoy and have a good time, and it's yeah. just, uh, you know, you just don't have to worry about packing stuff up and going to another venue. You're just there for the weekend. It's yeah. great, so we really enjoy it. But these festivals that you've you've done around the, basically around the country. Yeah. You do a lot of those. You d you've done a lot of those. Yeah, I got I basically got off the uh, festival circuit in uh, uh, nineteen, and uh, so I had thirty eight years of traveling, and um, doing festivals and cruise ships and things like that. Right. So, um, but I got to the point where I just. I couldn't stand flying, and uh, I've had some a few health issues, right. and, which I'm, you know, it's just it's just maintenance is all it is. No more than putting new tires on a car. You got <laughs> things to take care of. But I don't miss I don't miss not flying. I really love being able to come down and play a gig and go home in my own bed. And right, right. I love that. But yeah, we were doing uh, festivals sometimes in the fall when when the festival circuit was right. really busy. Almost every weekend. Really? Yeah. That's, so you know, I'd come home and it's got to be tough. I'd come home and then uh, four or five days later, jump on a plane and head back to California and and play nine shows and then be back Sunday night or Monday yeah. morning. Yeah, it was. In the meantime, you all also had a full time job, right? Had a full time job. Um, 1972, I was hired uh, by my hometown, uh, Otisville, village of Otisville. It's up in the northeast corner of Genesee County. Um, I was hired to be their assistant public works superintendent. And uh, next year, I took over the job as public works superintendent. So I was there for 39 years. Wow. And over the 39 years, I was uh, the public works superintendent, village manager, Downtown Development uh, Authority Director and Secretary. Oh, well, you did it all. Zoning Administrator. <laughs> I was either the most liked or the most hated guy in, around, you know. I bet you were. <laughs> but then I, I left there in uh, um, the last day of uh, July of 11. And the next day I started as the village manager up in Reese, which was directly uh, uh, east of Saginaw. And I was okay. up there for six years. Okay. So I had 45 years in uh, uh, local government and doing ma management. doing that in addition to all this music that you were doing. Yeah, well, you know, but on the other hand, uh, I was able to because of my vacation time and things that I had accumulated. Right. Uh, I was able to take long weekends. Scoot out for the weekend yeah. and play I a festival in California. I, I, never, I never got a vacation because <laughs> my vacations are always having. 
the horn in my mouth. You right, know? right. But boy, we were all over the world. We seen some great places. And I mean, we've been to the Mediterranean and North Africa and Spain, Portugal, Italy, everywhere. You know, just playing on a on a ship, basically. Yeah, cruise. Yeah, yeah. We but we went all over. Uh, played in Tahiti and. Uh, Two or three trips to uh, Hawaii, cruises, oh. uh, Alaska, Bermuda, everywhere, all the way down through. Uh, we spent the millennium uh, on a cruise ship 500 miles up the Amazon River in Brazil. Is that right? Yeah, <laughs> so we've been all over. So it's been great, you know. It's been, it's been a wonderful ride, so. But I'm really enjoying myself right now, just playing with my friends here in the mid-Michigan area and playing good music. You and you've got some great great players that you're working with. I, I mean, mean the, the, the last two times I saw you play, you had different groups both times, Yep. but they were both fantastic. I don't hire anybody. I'm gonna hire people that can play better than me. That's yeah. Well, that's, <laughs> that's, how you that's be. the secret, right? You <laughs> surround yourself with better musicians. Absolutely, absolutely. But yeah. you've worked with some great vocalists too. Oh yeah, uh, Barbara Ware. Uh, works with me on a regular basis, and um, I, uh, Kate Patterson has uh, worked with me, uh, Olivia Van Gore, young upcoming yeah. uh, young lady. Uh, Olivia's been, uh, she, start, she was playing with our big band, we have a big band out of Clarkston and Olivia was our vocalist, yep. but now she's kind of gone off on her own. Yep. She's doing very well. Yep. She's a real hot promoter. She's great. She's busy. Emma. Ab oh, yeah. Abba Cosm. Yeah, she's uh, great. Uh, she's worked with us. And, Marvin uh, Jones. Marvin Jones. Marvelous Marvin. Marvelous Marvin, right. Marvelous Marvin is wonderful. Love love working with him. I've worked with uh, Paul King. Oh, yeah, uh, Paul. Yeah. Paul used to sing in my big band back about 15 years ago. Yeah. I had a... 18-piece big band here in Lake Orion area. Yep. And Paul was our first vocalist. He was just getting started singing back then. Yep. And he's been he's been he's a great vocalist. Had a great singer uh, with my with the band that I um, started after a New Reformation band. It was called Wally's Warehouse Waves. Not a great name, but it was a great band. I got I've got your album. Yeah. <laughs> and we had a great singer in that band, uh, uh, Teresa Scavarda. She was an amazing, amazing talent. Yeah. I've seen her at the Sun Coast Sun Coast Festival, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great talent. So, yep, been been blessed to be able to uh, work with some and and wonderful musicians, wonderful piano players. My gosh, she's just those are tough to come by. Wonder, well, wonderful piano players, wonderful drummers, wonderful bass players. Yeah, and. Uh, you know, uh, when you're a trumpet player, you never um, ever play with another trumpet player unless you're playing in a big right. band, which I never have. Right. But one of the, the treats of my life uh, over the last few years was to get to know and become friends and to work with Johnny Trudell. Oh, late, yeah. Late Johnny Trudell, a great, yeah. great trumpet player. He was a master. Master, you know, Motown yeah. cat and everything else. But he was just fantastic and and Johnny and I kind of took a liking to each other and uh, it was a wonderful experience to sit next to him uh, with a trio behind us yeah, yeah and listen to him play and he'd listen to me play and we'd play together it was you know we were both at that stage in our life where there is no ego anymore you right, know? It's just, right yeah right. it's a wonderful place to be and I appreciated him and he dug what I was doing and it was it was a wonderful thing just he was a, a he was a great player he was amazing just a beautiful player yeah beautiful player but, beautiful. Uh, but but your rhythm sections are always great well you know um, you got to click you know, oh, yeah. you got to swing, yeah. and everybody's got got to work together. You know, it's people. People ask me, you know, how do you put together a band and don't rehearse her? And I say, you know, it's no different than if you pick up uh, nine guys and play baseball. You put nine guys on the field. Everybody knows where they're going. Everybody knows what their job is right. out there, and they just do it. Yeah. If they got any talent at all, you're yeah. going to win. You know. So I try to put together. I try to put together. Uh, musicians that complement each other, yeah, and um, and plus guys that 
fit me. You know, yeah. I'm kind of a niche player. I am not. Uh, uh, there are certain things I can do. There are certain things I can't do. And I hire cats that can uh, can complement that. Well, yeah, yeah. You know, one of the guys that used to work with you, I I just loved the way he played. Was uh, Frank Steed? Oh, Frank was great, man. Frank, he was a you know bass player. Yeah, he, and just just hit all the right notes. He come into the New Reformation band in um, the late uh, '80s. Uh, him and uh, Dave Miller. On banjo and guitar, and uh, uh, Milt Cernick on on drums, and all three of them were from Grand Rapids, mm -hmm. and um, so we were spread all over the state. But uh, Frank was an amazing player. Uh, again, he was self-taught, yeah. but he was a wonderful showman. He was uh, a pretty good singer, great bass player, rock solid. You know, yeah. if you had Frank behind you, you always knew where the beat was at. Absolutely. You know? And the same way with Miller on guitar, banjo, and, and uh, Milt. Those three guys just locked in and uh, probably the best rhythm section that I've ever worked with. And I've worked with a lot of great, a lot of great uh, musicians. But these guys, we worked together so much. They just, yep. And they had worked together for 20 years before they even got with the New Reformation. Okay. Thing, you know, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, these guys were locked in to begin yeah. with. So, it was a wonderful thing. So... Great experiences. Yep, yep. And you know, like I've always said, you know, when it's all said and done, all you got in life is, is family and memories. That's true. That's, that's all. True. That's all we have. And boy, I tell you what, uh, I've had great memories. Uh, Kathy and I have traveled the world, and uh, wonderful memories. And we're still making wonderful memories uh, every day with our friends like yourself. And, and Sharon and, well, and it's, uh, it's been it's been great you know like I say this greater Detroit Jazz Society has brought a lot of uh, good people and good musicians together yep you know and uh, I just I just like what they're doing well I was I was playing um, I was playing that uh, organization I should say before it was the Greater Detroit. It was the great, Greater Windsor or something Windsor, or other? Detroit, Windsor, yeah. Windsor, Detroit, yeah. Right? Bill Knowles was the, right. uh, uh, Bill Knowles was the kind of the director and uh, Emily Laura was yeah. was in there. And I basically uh, worked it uh, twice a month with Chuck Moss, buddy of mine on trombone. Right, oh yeah, I remember Chuck. Yeah, and uh, we started working that, I don't know, 25 years ago. Right. You know, could even be longer. But basically, it was Chuck's, it was the uh, Paint Creek Jazz Band. Oh, what, yeah. Is what it was. That was Chuck, Chuck Moss's Paint Creek Jazz Band. That's right. And we played two uh, Saturdays a month. Just us. No other bands. It was right. just, you know. Yeah. And then <clears throat> when when things got reformed and uh, uh, Bill and Sally Bowley right. took it over, they started expanding things out and started getting different uh, yep. bands in there. Going a little bit away from the traditional jazz to a little bit different. different. Yeah, music. and because of that, that organization has just bloomed. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. huge now. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, you can go there any uh, Saturday when there's a concert, and you're not going to be disappointed. No, no. Because, because Sally brings in... Great groups. She brings in great groups. Uh, very eclectic. There's going to be something for everybody. Oh yeah. Um, the uh, th this festival coming up. You've been playing this festival at Schoolcraft now, which is a Michigan jazz festival now for a number of years as well, right? I've played that. I started playing. I'm not there this year, um, and that's fine. It's fine with me because they have a number of new bands. Yep, I think I think Sally told me there's something like like 50 percent of the the groups are brand new, and brand there. new, and I'm all about that. I think it's it's time for maybe the old guys to step back, and these young kids come in and give them some exposure. You know? Well, you know, I, my wife and I have been going to that festival for the last few years, but I would much prefer going to that festival than the Detroit Jazz Festival. <laughs> 
the Detroit Festival now, they're, what they're doing is they're bringing in all these people from outside of town. I think we've got some of the best musicians around the country right here in Detroit. And yet we're going out of town, we're getting, bringing people in from all over the country. And to me, uh, the jazz that they're playing is a super modern stuff, which is way over my head. And I'd rather go back to the traditional stuff and listen to, you know, the the real what I call real jazz. Yeah. You know, traditional yeah. jazz versus all you know running like a a machine gun up and down the chord changes with no thought behind it. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. You know, the uh, um, I played I played the Detroit Jazz Festival a number of times uh, with Hugh Leal, and he had the what was uh, the Motor City Jazz Band or something like yeah. that. Yeah, Hugh Leal's uh, Motor City Jazz Band, and uh, it was great. We had uh, Chuck Moss and, and uh, Frank Harrison on tuba, and he's gone now. And of course, Hugh Leal on banjo. And it was it was it was a fun band, and we played it several years. But I noticed that as being down there. I mean, Dizzy. They brought Dizzy Gillespie in and John Faddis and all these great yeah. players. But you know, the same is kind of holding true with a lot of other festivals. Well, the the Suncoast Jazz Festival in, down in uh, Clearwater. Right. I've played that, uh, I don't know, 18, 19 times, I guess. And, uh, but they're starting to bring in guys from New Orleans and things like that, kind of getting away from right. the bands that really took them to where they're at now, you know? Right, right. But. Uh, well, things change, but you know, as as, as jazz moves on, I get further and further away from it because it's getting so complex now. You know, it's, it's, you got these guys playing, like I said, a saxophone like a machine gun. The more notes you get in, they think it's better. You know, but it's not, it doesn't have that, that real jazz feel to me anyway. Well, there's a glimmer of hope out there uh, for our kind of music, and that's the young people coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris Tabanaski, or uh, yeah. the clarinet player, yeah. sax player, uh, him and uh, Dave Cosmina. Oh, Dave uh, is you know, killer. Uh, Eric McIntyre, guitar player from Flint. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of young guys coming yeah. up, and they're they're playing not only the old traditional stuff, but they're doing it right. They're yeah. actually they're actually they're concerned about playing it the way that it was actually played. You know. Yeah. Which I never did, you know. I just, <laughs> I just loved to play the the tunes, and then we just, you know, felt played it the way we felt, you know, it should be played. But exactly. These cats do it right, you know. Yeah. So I, I've got some hope, and uh, like Olivia Van Gogh. Oh yeah. She's a, you know, young lady who was singing the Great American, you know, songbook. Yeah. And she's doing it right, and yeah. she's going back and listening to the classics. She's listening yep. to Sarah Vaughan and Ella and some of those. You know, exactly. singers from the past. Exactly, and she—they're digging it. You know. Yeah, I just think that I just think that there's there's hope out there because eventually, uh, I think eventually you're going to uh, get to the point where nothing makes any sense anymore, and you're going to be searching out something that you can understand. Right. Exactly. You know. Yeah. Exactly. That's that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, anyway, we're getting down close to our time. Do you have anything that you'd like to cover before we kind of wrap up the program? Boy, um, <laughs> I know well, we've gone through quite a bit, but you know, not not really. It's it, uh, thank you for uh, inviting me to come in today. Um, just a shout out to all the great musicians in the Mid Michigan area uh, and the Detroit area, and all over the country that I've been able to uh, work with and listen to and. I just been blessed. Yeah, I think so, we all have been blessed with yeah. the music, especially yeah. in the Detroit area. I mean, the, the Detroit, Michigan area yep. has got some great musicians. Absolutely, absolutely. Dave, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, George. It was great having you. Thank you, sir. Thanks for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you for Dave for uh, joining us today. We had a great session, and uh, hope to see you the next time. <laughs>